Here is my sump pump battery backup solution. Rather than uh, choosing the system with a primary pump operated from AC and a backup pump, a separate smaller pump that operates off a battery, that system is fine. But um, I chose the other solution, which is basically to run your primary sump pump um, on on AC and then switch to a battery backup power supply and invert it to AC and continue to run your primary sump pump. So either solution's fine, but if you're like me, you like to see the solution. So I'll show it to you. So this is the way I did it. This is the inverter that I chose connected to the 12 volt battery. And then on this side you have the cords. You have one that goes to the wall for AC power and of course the other one leads to the sump pump. So it really is that simple. So the sump pump is getting AC power, you know, 99% of the time. And this device will automatically switch to battery backup and change that over to AC power anytime there's a power outage. And then when the power comes back on, the inverter switches back over to regular grid power and then we'll send a trickle charge to the battery to top it off. So that's how this inverter differs from the ones you might see for RVs in that um, this one will this one has a built-in transfer switch so it knows to switch from AC power over to battery power and back again depending on whether your power is out or not. So these are the criteria that I used to choose this device. There were about 10 of them on, on Amazon that I looked at uh, from brands such as this one, this Ultian P. Another brand was Miu Moon. Another one was Egscati, MWXNE, Pump Spy, QVUAV, uh, the SCC America, um, VO Pumpo, Voon key, and then finally um, I had two of these Ultian P ones on my list. So this is the one that I chose. But um, if you're like me, you like to see how things are connected, so let me show you. Okay, let's start with the sump itself. It's behind all this. There's the sump itself, and you see two wires coming out. One of them is running to AC power, and the other one is the float controller. So they both run here. So it's, I just think it helps people if you see what's going on. So this is the, this cord comes from the sump pump itself, and it plugs into this float controller. And then the float controller would normally go into the wall, and that would be the end of it. But instead, I've got the float controller power going to the inverter. So, and then this other smaller cord here, that's the float controller itself, that runs to the, to the sump pump's float controller. So that's what triggers the power for the sump pump. So you have two cords right here coming out of the sump pit. And then you have power from this float controller going to, instead of to the wall, I'll show you where they lead. They lead to the invert, um, to the inverter, at least to the inverter. So this is the sump pump float controller plugged in, the actual power, and then this is the power from the wall, the AC outlet in the wall that runs the inverter. And you'll see why this is one of the reasons I chose this one, because it has these battery switches, so you can tell the inverter what type of battery you have, and I am using an AGM. So I've got the first switch in the off position and the second switch in the on position. And then these lights here tell you the status of the battery, whether it's charging or full. And then these, these lights here tell you if there's a fault or if the power is on. So very simple, and I like this form factor. I'll show you why well, I thought the form factor was important. Look at your setup. Where are you going to put your battery physically? I knew that I would put the battery on the left and that my outlets from the AC outlet and the sump pump controller were on the right. So if I put this where I want it, 
the batteries on this side and the AC power is on that side. So just form factor wise, it works fine. This remote controller is pretty common. You'll see that on a lot of the other brands, it's exactly the same. And it, it doesn't come mounted, it just, it just kind of sits there and you can mount it on the wall, you can put it wherever you like. I just Velcroed it to the side of the inverter. And it has two buttons. The one on the right just lights it up. And the one on the left, don't press it because that turns the inverter off. Now, if you're like me, you want to know what that exactly means, okay? If you turn the inverter off, it will not run when the power goes out. So it's kind of pointless to turn it off. If you do accidentally turn it off, it will continue to run your sump pump on grid power. So all is not lost. So, you know, you go, let me turn the light on, and you go, whoops, I pushed this button. Okay, everything went off. Yikes. And my sump pump, you'll see, still blinking green. So it's still getting grid power. The only thing it won't do now is switch to battery backup. So it's kind of pointless. So see this button here? If you get one of these with that particular remote control, just, just don't turn it off. <laughs> it's really that simple. The readout, you want to see the readout. The top number is the voltage of the battery currently, so it's completely topped off. The second number is the voltage coming out of the inverter going to your sump pump, 122 volts. And the bottom one, wattage, that's how much you're drawing off the device right now. So the sump pump's not running right now, so it's sitting at zero watts. And when the sump pump runs, that jumps up to around 500 watts for about 10 seconds and then the pump shuts off. So it doesn't draw as much power as I thought. Check the, check the uh, specs of your sump pump. So whichever one of these um, power inverters you buy is it, that it can handle the wattage. So my sump pump never draws more than 500 watts, so the 1500 watt version was fine. So I know you like to see how things are connected. So here's how the other side is connected. There's your positive and negative that run to your battery. See the two fans? They only run to keep the inverter cool when it's on battery power and it's never gotten warm enough to do so. And here's the battery box. Put your battery in a box to protect it. And I'll open it up for you. And I'll show you here. Do, 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 do. Oops. I got myself a Duracell AGM Marine Deep Cycle 80 Amp Hour battery. And it is uh, sized series or group 24 so it's on it's it's on the smaller side but for <laughs> for my setup i've calculated that this will keep my sump pump running for days if there's a power outage so i'm quite fine with that so there's how you how you connect it let me run through it again for you if you're like me you like to see how things work okay Here's the power outlet, and that cord runs to the inverter, right here. That's from the wall, okay? And then out from the inverter, right here, that wire powers the float controller here. And then the float controller is signaled by the float inside the sump pump by this little wire here and then the float controller actually says oh the water level's up i need to send power to the sump pump so this this plug is the actual sump pump and then it runs down finally along with the float controller wire into the sump pit that's it that's really it so if you already have a you know just one primary pump and you want it to run during a power power outage I think this is a good, simple solution. Uh, let me run over the, the criteria that I used to pick this out. Uh, the price, um, what I did was I looked at 10 different models. I looked at the brand. Like again, I chose the old TNP. I looked at the price. This one was 239 on Amazon. The wattage, I calculated that 1,500 watts or 2,000 watts was fine.
I looked at the screen, whether it was whether it has a screen at all. And if it does, is it attached to the box or is it a detached one? And this is a detached one. I just attached it myself. The sine wave, um, make sure you get a pure sine wave. Uh, modified sine wave, really, uh, float controllers really don't like modified sine waves. So pure is better. Um, how does it control your battery? Uh, this one uses switches. How much charging power can it give the battery? Uh, this one's rated of 20 amps. That's what it sends the battery when it needs to really recharge if it's been running off battery for a while. Otherwise, it just sends a trickle. And let's see. Then look at the form factor, and I did that on, when I picked this one. Look at which side of the inverter your battery connects to and which side of the inverter goes to your sump pump and AC outlet so that the configuration works for your, your setup and your shelving and all that. So um, that's about it. So if you're like me, you like to see it. So I just wanted to share this with you. Okay, we're about to unbox our inverter charger UPS. So join me as we unbox this inverter for our sump pump. Boxed up very nicely. Interesting thing about these unboxing videos, you really can only make them once. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. 1500 watt uninterruptible power source. Okay, we've got a power cord here. And we've got the screen, the uh, remote for it. And I've, I've got this power bar here with a couple of light bulbs in it because we're going to test the pass-through function. I do not yet have a marine deep cycle battery yet that it draws power from during a power outage. Because before I go that far, I just want to test its ability to pass through standard AC power. So let's get her out of the box here. At least I don't have to try to hold the camera. I've got that on the tripod. Alright, okay, set the box back down, now looks like we've got the battery cables here that will connect to DC power source, instructions, so let's close the box back up and use it as a table, alright, and here is the inverter, rotate it around here. And we're going to remove the... It's packed really nicely. Did a lot of research before I picked this one. And I really didn't want to just randomly pick one. I wanted one that was going to fit in the spot I have available for it. All right. All right, let me show you what we've got here. This is the AC side. This is coming in from a wall outlet, and this is going to, one of these will go out to my float controller, which then the sump pump plugs into. This is for the remote, and these are your battery type switches. And on the other side is the backup power source connection, the DC power. So your marine battery will connect to these using these cables right here. And they need two fans to keep it cool. There you go. Old TNP, 1500 watt. And it's a 20 amp charge. I thought it was 25, but 20 is fine. All right. Let me pause this and we'll pick this up. Okay, we've got it all set up here. Got our marine battery, our AGM, deep cycle. Mm -hmm. 12 volt, mm -hmm. series 24, we've got our 1500 watt 
inverter charger UPS and I've got a garden hose running into the sump pit and right now we've got power grid power Okay, it took about two minutes to fill up the sump pit, so I'm going to pause it for a minute or two. All right, I've disconnected the setup from grid power. Battery's putting out 13.1 volts. the garden hose running you should be able to hear it well, that was a success and we're still we're still simulating a power outage mm -hmm. and one way you can tell on this controller is when the AC output is not blinking then you're on battery mm -hmm. when it's blinking you're getting uh, power from the grid Good stuff. All right, successful test.